Brett Pontecorvo here at mainstage to Ableton.com. Today we're going to talk about how we can set maximum and minimum velocity ranges to change sounds based off of how hard you're playing your keyboard. Mainstage has a way to do this and so does Ableton and today we're going to talk about how to set that up. Here we are inside of Mainstage uh, and we're looking at the minimum and maximum velocity value in our layer editor. So for the giant, I've got it set up so that the minimum velocity is 1 and the maximum is 79. And for the classic pad, 1 to 100. Alicia's keys, 72 to 127. And buzzy pad, the same thing. So at lower velocities, you can see on the right-hand side of the screen there, the giant and the classic pad. And at higher velocities, Alicia's keys and the buzzy pad. Uh, I'm going to show you how to recreate this feature inside of Ableton Live. Um, I think Ableton does it really well, and there are even uh, a few improvements that I think make it even more playable. All right, so here we are inside of Ableton, um, recreating the maximum and minimum value for a channel strip. So step one is going to be to drop an instrument rack onto a default MIDI channel. So you can do that by navigating over here to your browser selecting instruments and dragging an instrument rack right onto that channel. Um, and we're going to want to see the chains since we're going to be working with that. So you're going to want to click on the show hide chain list um, and make sure your velocity menu is selected. Step number two is going to be to drag your sounds right over here. So I've got two sounds that I'm going to use today, and you can use as many as you want, um, depending on the situation, but this is a gentle piano pad. And I've got this guy over here, which is a little bit more of an aggressive piano sound, um, and a, a saw wave pad. Step number three is going to be to adjust your chains. So these big red lines here, these are our chains. And what they do is they send your MIDI to one of these sounds based off of the parameters you set. Um, so we want these parameters to change based off of velocity. So lower numbers over here, higher numbers over here. I am going to go ahead by clicking over here and drag down this chain so that this instrument only plays at lower velocities. And I'm going to move this one so that it only plays at higher velocities. And I'm leaving the gap here just to demonstrate how this works. So lower velocities, sound one. Higher velocities, sound two. Middle of the road, no sound. Um, Ableton allows us to crossfade these sounds. Um, so while we're adjusting our chains, I'm going to show you how to do that. I like to have them overlap a good deal so that we get a real gradual fade. And our crossfade happens by adjusting this top little lighter line here. So I'm going to move this top line down. And don't be shy with it. It is good to have them overlap and fade quite a bit. So now when I'm playing lower velocities, and when I'm playing higher velocities, it's going to the second sound. Um, I just love that feature. Now step number four is going to be to add a velocity plugin, and we really want to do this so that we have um, even better control over the instrument we've created. So uh, if we scroll to our MIDI effects here, we can drag our velocity right down. Um, and this is essentially going to tell Ableton everything below this point needs to be raised. So we're going to click this guy and we're going to move it up. So our lowest possible value is about 70. And that's going to be totally fine for getting it up here. So now when I play, it's shooting right up. And when I turn this off, Real easy to keep it down there. Um, and if you are going to use this in a live situation, which I hope you will, um, it makes sense to map this power button. So you're going to do that by right mouse clicking, edit MIDI or key map, depending on what you're playing with. But for our video, we're going to click key map. Um, and then select a key on your keyboard that you want to use, um, and you can close that out. Now, every time I hit that key, it's going to toggle on and off. So if I'm playing something 
quiet and all of a sudden I have the need to switch to a louder sound. And then I can easily jump back down to here. Transitioning to Ableton can be really overwhelming, and that's why I just created my first ebook, The Fast Track Patch List Guide, that's going to have you up and running with a patch list in no time at all. So you can head over to mainstagetoableton.com forward slash go to get your free copy today. And to stay up to date with all of our latest blog posts, be sure to subscribe to our channel here.